I want to go to some of the things that Andy was talking about, right? Some of the, some of the double standards that are going on. Um, as we know, uh, Ukraine is predominantly white and predominantly uh, Christian. It is in Europe. Um, and refugees who are fleeing the crisis right now and the war are being treated incredibly differently. And nowhere is that clearer than in Poland. So this is just from the New York Times. In Poland, government officials assisted by American soldiers and diplomats have set up processing centers for Ukrainians. Quote, anyone fleeing from bombs from Russian rifles can count on the support of the Polish state, the Polish interior minister Mariusz Kaminski told reporters on Thursday. His government is spending hundreds of millions of dollars on a border wall, a project it began after refugees and migrants from the Middle East tried to reach the country last year, but ended up marooned in neighboring Belarus. So we are building a literal wall to keep out Middle Eastern refugees, but Ukrainians can come on in. Um, it just, there are so many instances of this and other European nations are also doing the same, lifting caps on refugees yeah. and it, asylum seekers um, in this instance. Is that like, well, now is Poland, I know since I'm Jewish, I have a monitor set up in all countries. So I ha do know when I have, you know, just anecdotal stories. What's the weather I'm like in Poland there, right now? It's so, it's more <laughs> anti-Semitic now than it was during Hitler's. Yeah, it's so very bad I've heard right now. Poland is very anti-Semitic. Yeah. Uh, but uh, is it like Hungary? With, does it it's, have it's, an Orban? It's, it's Hungary adjacent. I was in Poland a couple of years ago. Uh, before the pandemic, and I visited uh, Auschwitz, and I was talking to the, some Jewish scholars there, and you see, you saw the resurgence of this far-right nationalism and anti-Semitism, the revision in, of history, and Poland kind of falling the way of Hungary and Orban. By the way, Orban is beloved by Tucker Carlson and American conservatives because they see him and Putin as the defender of white Christian civilization, Western civilization, which is doing a lot of heavy lifting for white and Christian. And Orban, <laughs> especially when it came to the 2015 refugee crisis, right? He doubled down on ethno-nationalism. That's how he kind of flexed and says, I will protect you. And specifically, he's like even more blunt against miscegenation. We have to protect the purity of our race. And yeah. so against the Muslim brown horde, I shall protect you, my people. They're incompatible uh, the, they're not civilized, which is the same word that uh, the CBS anchor used uh, just yesterday, right? Like, unlike the, the refugees in Afghanistan, these are civilized people. And so oh. the double standard is actually profound because you're literally seeing these far right governments whose entire like reason of existence and the reason why they're in power and have like used ethno nationalist popular, uh, you know, uh, jingoism mm -hmm. um, are saying, OK, OK, come on in, white Christian uh, Ukrainians. Whoa, 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 brown, dirty Syrians, you mm -hmm. horde, you rats, you rodents, you swarms. And then you also seeing that uh, in the U.S. a little bit where there's pressure for us now open the borders. But then there is a cap whenever there are Syrian refugees or Mexicans mm -hmm. or like Central Americans and so forth. Haitians. So, I, right, yeah, Haitians. we're not lifting title. 42 is still in place, for example. There's a cap and then like no, people aren't going to implement TPS, the temporary standards. And so it's like the family guy chart. I don't know if you guys have seen the family guy color chart of mm -hmm. who's like who's a terrorist and who's just like a lone wolf. The lighter you are, that's like, like the more of the lone wolf, the darker you are. It's a terrorist. And so like yes. that's it's it's really terrible joke to make. But it's so on point is that go off the color chart and it's good to be a white refugee. Yeah. Well, this is what used to enrage me when a bill, I've hated Bill Maher for a long time. But what it used to be was like, and this whole new atheism movement mm -hmm. where these people would come in and they would say, and Bill Maher used to go, we don't have to worry about Christian religion causing all, 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 all like he doesn't know about Andre Brev. I mean, this, it's just unbelievable. And, yeah. and I was mocked by so many of these new atheists who were trying to hide their prejudice against Islam as critique, you know. Because yes. my mom, she was a Jewish person. She became a Quaker. It's the mm -hmm. most wonderful religion in the world. If you say, I'm going to hate people just based on who they, uh, 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 that's jingoism. And that's, that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's what motivated Mar and all those people. And they're worse. They're worse because they're claiming, they claim to have been progressives, which they weren't. No, yeah. I mean, in terms of the, the terrorism, it's like, it is... Yeah, it's incredible. It's just Islamophobia. And you're absolutely right. No one actually is talking about white Christian terrorists or, or so-called Christian. Let's be honest, you know, and say well, someone who's not Christian. religious. But yeah, yeah, exactly. People think they're doing this in the name of fucking whatever God. Um, 
I wanted to go to that clip that Wajah had referenced just to show you this anchor. Uh, he's since apologized for what he said. Um, but uh, I, Paige, what's his name again? I had his name because I wanted to do him justice, but maybe I'll for, I'll remember it in a second. Here we go. Oh, it's right here in the clip name. Charlie Degada. Here he is. Um, ooh, foot in mouth. This isn't a place with all due respect. Um you know, like Iraq or Afghanistan that has seen conflict raging for decades. You know, this is a relatively civilized, uh, relatively European, I have to choose those words carefully too, uh, city where you wouldn't expect that or hope that it's going to happen. So it's partly human nature, but they are not in denial. Mm, not good. I'll take white mm. journalism for a thousand, Alex. <laughs> I mean, it's you can unpack that. It's so I mean, I, I'm glad he apologized and you probably didn't want to be malicious or cruel, but it's so exquisite that that clip unpacks everything. The white gaze, whiteness, uh, Islamophobia, who yeah. is seen as civilized, the double standards, the, 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 the justification for invasion, the justification for this atrocious war that Andy referred to that, you know, we grew up with the post 9-11 war on terror. We yeah. have to save brown women from brown men we have to i mean literally that was like if you looked at, if you look back laura bush who was the wife of george still is the wife of george w bush <laughs> you know made the feminist argument that we have to save these brown women oh, yeah. from these savages right and in the, the horde the rats the animals the rodents the type of terminology that was used against jews and it's openly used against syrian refugees and brown and uh, refugees right the 2018 midterms the invasion the caravan so you dehumanize a people even though you, you're you supposed to step back and say these are human beings, regardless of their skin color, ethnicity, national origin, who are fleeing. That's why they are refugees. And we should treat them with empathy and compassion. But once they are of a certain skin color and a certain yeah. religion, threat. And it's even more insidious because who was doing the bombing and invading in Iraq and Afghanistan? Right. The oh, United really? States. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, was it 1991 where George... Bush said, please rise up against these people and I will help you. And then he allowed Hussein to massacre a lot of people in the South. I mean, because we betrayed them. Yeah, we betrayed them. We be betrayed the Iraqis. And I mean, and we betrayed Afghans. I'll say it also. Republicans and Democrats have betrayed the Afghan people. I mean, people are talking about refugees. This is the double standard, right? You should. You should help Ukrainians. We should see this as an example of what happens where overnight, you know, this fragile thing we call democracy can shatter if there's a madman at our doorstep, right? Yes. For, for United States, I would say internally. Uh, but then we also like sometimes have to just, I think you can hold multiple concerns at the same time, Francesca, like, oh, there's Yemenis whom we have fueled this war between Saudi Arabia and Iran tilting towards Saudi Arabia that has created a humanitarian crisis. Oh, Afghans right now, as we're speaking, are in a humanitarian crisis. Yes. Syrians, Haitians. To and say yet, nothing of, and also Palestinians. Palestinians let's yeah, like we don't, and, and so then here's another one. If you want to get really juicy, who do we applaud for picking up arms and Molotov, Molotov cocktails against their oppressors? Yeah. And then who do we say, whoa, 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 easy there, easy there, darky, put down the, put down that Molotov cocktail, darky, be peaceful. I mean, if you just want to throw it out there. No one, you're absolutely right. Um, the double standard is insane. And also the the like the amnesia about who was perpetrating those other wars. Condoleezza Rice today on Fox News basically saying, yes, it is a war crime to invade another country. Oh, my God. I can't believe you don't combust Vile. from the irony that you are currently living in. Like she this is a woman. I mean, Condoleezza Rice is one of the Bush administration officials who are like, no, 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 we should have gone in. Like knowing what we know now. I'd still go in like she continues. There's no shame. There, and all these no people shame. failed up, you know, like if I can tie a thread to what Andy was saying, like let's cancel culture. It, we're old enough to remember this disastrous war that we still live with, where the war has literally come home with the creation of the DHS, right? And surveillance and lack of privacy and the refugees, people still dying in Afghanistan and Iraq, the two countries that that uh, journalist mentioned. Yeah, it's chaos because we helped create chaos. Generations got destroyed. Every single cheerleader, if you just go down the list, if someone's bored one day, do an Excel sheet of all the people in the Bush administration, all the people in media, all the people in think tanks who cheerled that war. Yep. I was not one of them. Francesco was not one of them. I protested that war as a 21-year-old, right? Go down the list. See how many people have apologized. I think there's three. See how many people have failed up every single one. Yep. What cancel culture? 
What's going on, Frantifa? If you haven't already, subscribe to this channel right now. Hit that button. And also, you can become a patron and support the show every single week. Get access to bonus episodes and exclusive merchandise. Patreon.com slash Bituation Room. Do it.